In this particular video, we're going to go ahead and start looking at modifying some of our objects so we can actually write code that actually causes them to do something. And so what we're going to do now is, if I noticed here, I didn't save from the last time that I had the project, so I'm going to just choose File Save to make sure it's currently saved and everything's up to date. What I want to first look at is this file under the generated Java files. I'm going to open up my package and there's my r.java. I'm going to go ahead and double click it. And you're going to notice that all of the items we just added that we referenced an ID or to add an ID to, they show up. They're right here under the ID class. And you can see here I've got button one and edit text one that both show up here. And so that's why we added that ID attribute to those tags. I'm going to go ahead and close that out now. And we're going to go ahead and focus in on, uh, go ahead and back up here, the source file, my package, and then this project one activity.java. I'll go ahead and double click that. And the first thing that I want to do is actually import some more tools into our code. And so if you expand that, you can see there's two things that are currently imported. And what I want to import is part of this Android. If you go back to this Android 2.1 folder that we've got, I've got a view and I've got widgets and I've got all of those wonderful tools that are part of those packages and I want to import those into my code here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit enter after the last import, type in another one, import android dot, and we'll do view dot asterisk and then you can see that's already been created here and I'll just go ahead and click on that to finish it out. You can see what we've got, the asterisk is a wild card that means everything within that package. And so it ends with a semicolon because in this particular language uh, all of our statements have to end with a semicolon. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter again and type in an import again, android.widget.asterisk and then a semicolon after that. And that's going to import everything from the widget as well. And so I've got both of those in there. I get a little uh, caution. Uh, box that come, or a little caution symbol that comes up that says, hey, you know, you imported these, but they've never been used. And so we're going to need to use these. It's just, it's not going to affect my code with the yellow uh, squiggly line that's underneath it. That's just a caution for us, just to kind of give us a little bit of a warning. Now I'm going to come down here, and we're going to look at this class that's been created. You see your public class, and this extends from this curly brace all the way down to this curly brace right here as part of our class. Think of this, if you're not familiar with coding, um, when we looked at the graphical side of it where everything fit into that layout, think of it kind of like this for the coding side. Everything's going to fit within this class for this particular project. And within this I've got a method here called public void. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some variable or objects that are going to be part, um, that we're going to be able to manipulate and we're going to link those to those graphical objects we have on the XML page that we created. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to move down this override. So when you find the at symbol override, go ahead and space it down a couple. And we're going to go ahead and use some of these objects that are part of some of the packages we imported. The first one was a button. So I'm going to go ahead and type in button. And I'm going to go ahead and hit space. And if you're familiar with any programming languages, this is like declaring a variable. You type in the type and then a name after it. So I'm going to give this button a name. And I'm just going to call it btn1, uh, short for button 1. And end that statement with a semicolon. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter again. After the button, I'm going to go ahead and do the next one, which is the edit text that we had. So I'm going to go type in edit, and then a capital T with the text there, edit text. And that's going to be, I'm just going to call that one etxt. And I'll just put a 1 after that one as well, and end that with a semicolon. And so I've created two different objects here to work with, this button 1 and this etxt1. And we're going to now link those to the XML objects that we've got created. So we're going to go ahead and work on that now. And so what I'm going to do here under the onCreate, I'm going to move down here. And after this last statement on the create, we're going to go ahead and link those things. And so I'm going to start out with this btn1 that I've created. So I'm going to type in btn1. I'm going to set it equal to, and then what I need to do for their syntax is I'm going to need to tell it the object type, which is going to be a button. That's going to be in those parentheses. And then after the button, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, this method called find view by ID. And if I start typing it in directly after that last parenthesis, the closing parenthesis, find view by ID. And make sure you use the same kind of case sensitivity as far as uppercase and lowercase. The capital letters for the V, 
the B and the I. It's called camel casing, and so we need to keep that consistent because it is important within this language. And then I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use a parenthesis, and then within this parenthesis, I'm going to use the R dot ID dot, and then I need to figure out which object I ID'd. And um, earlier on the previous lesson, when we added this to the r.java file and the one that I want to work with for this one that I want to link it to is this one called button one so I'm going to go ahead and put button one and that's going to go ahead and end that particular setup or the link and I'm calling it a link because essentially that's what we're doing is we're taking this object that we've created here and linking it to the other object and we're going to need to end that with a semicolon and so that establishes that connection and I need to do the same thing for my text box that I have created. So we're going to go ahead, on our code, we called it etxt1. So I'm going to go ahead and call it etxt1. And set it equal to, and it's not a button, it's an edit text. So I'm going to type in edit text here. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and type in the find view by ID. And then we're going to do the r.id. And you can see that the name of that particular object that was on my graphical side was called edit, and then a capital T E X T one. And so, if we were to chosen better names rather than the default names, it probably would have linked in our head, in our mind, a little bit more as far as like what object it is that we're working with. But since we leave left them as the default names, they really don't have much significance other than the fact that we can determine that this one was a button and this one was an edit text. And I need to end that here now with the semicolon. Now this next part is going to be a little bit more tricky. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that whenever one of my objects is clicked or something happens to one of those objects that are on my graphical side, code there's code to link to that that'll run whenever that event happens. And so what I'm going to do is just click at the end of my last statement and we're going to type in the BT N1. So whenever this button, I'm going to this method that I want to work with is called set and it's going to be a capital O and then on click listener and you can see that it started pulling up here I'm going to go ahead and double click that and you can see now that it's gone ahead and filled it in you've got the parentheses here for this method I've got this L I'm going to go ahead and overwrite that and type in the word new that's in there new and space and what we're going to do is do a new on click listener so I'm going to do new and I'm going to do view V I E W it's capital V for that one dot and you can see here it's coming up on click listener. If it's not coming up yet, you can start typing it in on click and you can start seeing it on click listener. The wonderful thing about doing it this way and using this IntelliSense that's popping up is the fact that it'll fill in a lot of code for us. And I'm going to go ahead and double click that and you're going to see what happened. It actually filled in quite a bit of stuff here for me. Uh, one of the things that I did and um, it's filled everything in until the very end of my statement, which is now right there. And I've got a little red curly line underneath that which is basically telling me that I have not completed my statement with a semicolon so I'm going to add that semicolon there to get rid of that squiggly line and now let's take a look at what happened what I'm saying here is whenever this button 1 is clicked okay whenever it's clicked it's gonna run certain code and that code that's gonna run is now gonna be set up underneath this to do auto generated method stub in fact it's from this curly brace till this curly brace anything in between those it's going to be the code that will run whenever that button gets clicked so let's go ahead and write some code to modify that text box that we had which is called an edit text and so what we're going to do is that is called etxt1 on this code so I'm going to go ahead and type in etxt1 and I'm going to go ahead and put a period or a dot after that now what I want to happen is I want the text that's part of that text box or the edit text object that we're working with, I want the text to be changed and there's a method that will allow me to change the text from here. It's called set and I'll type in set and then t e x t and you can start seeing it come up right there, set text. And I'm going to go ahead and just double click it and you'll see it fills in the rest for me and I've got text that's in there automatically it just says text and what I'm going to need to do is put in some text this is a string that I'm going to be wanting to put in here I don't, I don't have a string variable created for this one so I'm going to hard code some actual text in here so I'll need to use the double quote 
and I'll just type in a double quote and then whatever I want to show up in that text box I'm just going to press in there um, you displayed text and then go ahead and end that with the double quote and then at the end of the statement we're going to add the semicolon so here's what it's going to look like when it's all said and done ETXT1 which is the edit text object that we're working with that is now going to have the text changed. We're going to set the text to now be you displayed text. All right, we're almost to the point now where we're going to actually see how this works. What we're going to need to do is before I can run my code, I need to actually create a virtual uh, device to be able to run that's going to set up the Android for us. And so what I'm going to do in the next video is we're going to set up the virtual device and we're going to then run this application to see what happens on our first application.